So yeah, we are looking at uh, Fedora tonight because, uh, you know, over the past couple of weeks, well, we did have a poll just asking what people would like to see more of on the show. Mm -hmm. And the leading uh, answer to that was we want to see different types of Linux, mm -hmm. different flavors. So we're talking, you know, it's similar to Ubuntu, but it's a different, brand, you know, different brand, different uh, suite of software. So we decided to take a quick look at, uh, at Fedora 10 first, uh, just because it's probably an easy transition for me. Uh, but I did install it into a virtual machine here, so I don't have full, you know, I don't have uh, like my 3D effects and things like that and my NVIDIA drivers installed because it's just a virtual machine. But I, it gives me an idea of how it, how it looks, how it uh, performs, and uh, certainly the installation was a breeze. It was oh, really yeah. nice to install uh, Fedora 10. Okay. Uh, everything was kind of similar to Ubuntu in that, you know, a lot of the Linux distributions these days, uh, especially over the past couple of years, everything's very, you know, it asks the questions now. It does the installation. Then there's a couple questions at the end sometimes, but it's basically finished and you're done and it reboots and you're in. Super user friendly. Very user friendly. That's very nice. easy to install and doesn't halt. I love that it doesn't halt the installation process to ask you questions during the process. So you can walk away from the computer while it's installing. Oh, that's good. Come back to it later and it's done. And you just ask, answer the questions then when you return to it. That's right. That's yeah. nice. But it doesn't, it doesn't happen halfway through the installation. Windows XP was notorious. Uh, mm. Horrible installer in that you'd, you'd answer a couple questions, it would start installing, and then it would stop the installer to ask more questions. Mm. And then it would start installing again, and more stuff, and then it would ask you for networking settings, and then it would start installing more stuff. So you literally have to be sitting in right. front of the computer in order to do the installation. Mm. So if you wanted to walk away or whatever, or if you had multiple computers to be installing the software on, You're there all day. it's a real pain. Yeah. What about Vista? Vista actually got it right. For oh, once, good. I'll say that that's the one thing that they got right was their installer. Okay. They finally clued into uh, how to create a user-friendly installer. So oh, good. We'll touch on that on a later show as well. Awesome. So just a quick boo at Fedora 10. I am pretty pleased about the look. I mean, you guys know that I love blue, and it's not a, it's not a reason to choose an operating system. But this operating system does perform quite similar to Ubuntu. It's based on, uh, it has the GNOME desktop environment. Uh, so it's, it's pretty easy to transition from Ubuntu into Fedora. However, this is not a Debian-based operating system. This is Fedora, uh, which is from Red Hat. And so things operate a little bit differently when it comes to the, the package manager and things like that. Um, so it takes a little bit of learning how to you know, add and remove your programs. There's no Synaptic package manager, for example. There's no apt-get, for example. So if you've been watching the show and learning about those kind of applications, you need to learn uh, the differences, like, uh, like yum and yumx as a replacement for apt-get and synaptic package manager. So, um, so I haven't had a lot of experience with this, and this is the first time that I've personally got in, into uh, an operating system that steps outside of Debian uh, since oh, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. So an uncomfortable transition for me, I'll be honest. Oh. And, and one of the questions that a viewer was asking is, which is, which is easier? Is it, uh, is it Ubuntu or is it Fedora 10? And I must say that, in all honesty, I can't answer that question because I think it's a u per user thing. Oh, okay. For me, personally, I think that for me to upgrade to Intrepid or for me to you know, eventually go to Jaunty is going to be a lot easier for me easier, with quotes around it, mm -hmm. than stepping into, say, Fedora 10. Because you're so familiar. Because I'm familiar. Yeah. I've, been, I've been using Debian-based operating systems with apt-get and synaptic for uh, basically all of my Linux using days. So for me to step outside of that and get into an RPM-based distribution, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit different. But uh, Linux is, is great because across the board, it doesn't matter which flavor of Linux you're using, essentially at the core, it's the same thing. Um, so it's just a different suite of software, a different way that some of the software works. And so you just have to learn you know, what, how each one works uh, differently from, from one another. Okay. So with, uh, with Fedora 10, of course, I'm not the guy to get into an in-depth uh, study of it because I'm pretty new to it. But that said, I think if you're, if you're a new Linux user, if you've never used Linux before, this is a good alternative uh, to Ubuntu. Uh, and probably a good one to step into as well. And they do have a KDE uh, version as well if you want something that's a little more familiar to a Windows, uh, similar to a Windows interface. So there's a couple of applications that are just absolutely must have in Fedora 10. Uh, one of them is, I've already mentioned, called YumX. Uh, another thing that works a little differently is sudo. Uh, in this instance, what I've been doing is just going su, su uh, dash, which is going to allow me to log in as root uh, in a temporary session. Um, so in this case, now I can go yum install yumx, which is going to allow me to install that yumx, which is basically an equivalent of uh, your Synaptic Package Manager for uh, Fedora 10. 
So, and you'll know what that is from from previous previous episodes. You know what I'm you, you able to follow what I'm talking. Just tell me if I'm. I don't. Over. Because you're I you're don't. like our our equalizer here. I'm sorry. I've just. I haven't, I don't okay. know what you're talking about. Right? Synaptic Package Manager is the software that we use in Ubuntu yeah. to install applications. Okay. So Fedora yeah. works a little differently because the software suite is different. The package manager is based on RPM packages rather than DEB, Debian packages. So R RPM stands for what? Oh. Off the top of my head? Let's, let's okay. find out. I'm sure that there's th 30 people typing it in the chat room right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Deb is a lot easier because you know it's just Debian. Okay. Revolutions per minute? No, that's not it. Oh, here it is. Oh, they beat me. They beat Google to Red it. Red Hat Package Manager? That's right. RPM Package Manager. Originally called Red Hat Package Manager. All right. Abbreviated Thank RPM. you to who sent that to me. I can't find them here. <laughs> I lost. But oh, we got good it. guy. Good guy. Thank You're you. such a good You're guy such for good sharing guy. that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, um, so sorry to No, digress. that's okay. So I'm still learning my way around the operating system, and, and so it is very new to me. But I'm, I'm liking it. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that this is pretty sleek. Just taking a look here. Um, so then from there, now, I'm such, a, I'm such a terminal geek because I don't know my way around the, you know, the things are <laughs> in different places. Here we go. Yeah, well, I, I do. I tend to jump to terminal because I find that then I can at least get to where I want to go because... Everything's you know available in terminal. So under system tools and applications, you've got your yum extender, yum being your equivalent to apt. Okay. Okay. That's all kind of making sense. Yes. Yep. So it's going to ask me for my password, and so this is going to allow me to install applications and things like that. And then there's another application that I thought was really cool. This is uh, something that A. Jameson recommended. This is uh, one called Auto 10, and that's something that has to be installed from. Uh, from their website, okay. I believe. So, um, so I'm going to actually post the link to that in the show notes uh, of this episode, episode number 67. But essentially what Auto10 allows you to do is, let's see if I can Google it here. It's, it's similar to Perfect Ubuntu in that it's just designed to allow you to get your DVD support, your multimedia support, a couple of non-free pieces of software like Flash, uh, uh, the Flash Player plugin for Mozilla Firefox, okay. things like that. So let me just pull that up here. Okay. It's pretty straightforward to, to install anyway, so I'll just uh, bring her up. And what I'll do is I'll just post <laughs> it in the show notes rather than trying to find it during the live broadcast. I'll okay. post it in the show notes, the link to Auto 10. That's the, the one that allows you to install non-free software. And okay. it's, it's quite decent. So And it's a GUI, so that makes me jealous. If anybody has any comments for us in the chat room, just uh, join us at Category5.tv. Happy to uh, include you in the discussion as well. Because I am such a noob when it comes to Fedora 10. But I do kind of want to show you what it, uh, what it looks like and how it, uh, how it works, or at least where mm -hmm. I'm at right now. I mean, I'm, I'm nowhere special. but <laughs> 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 This is uh, the application I was ta telling you about, Auto 10. So you can see the GUI. See how it's... So if I want Flash plugin, I can just... Sometimes I lose my mouse when I'm zoomed in like that. Oh. It's crazy, eh? All right, I'll get it back. But essentially, you can just uh, you can just click on any of those applications. So you've got Frostwire, uh, Google Desktop, Google Earth, all different things that you can install into your Fedora 10 uh, desktop, as well as Compass Fusion, which is very cool. That gives you the special effects and things like that. Right. Another resource that was shared with me uh, by Slip3D, and just... Uh, it, and you're watching the chat room, and just yeah, in case just anyone any mentions there, it, there's yeah. a great resource that Slip3D shared with me uh, called FedoraSolved.org. And this website is just a, a vast resource of Fedora users who want to make the transition simpler. Uh, so there's a lot of great tutorials, a lot of information here. Check it out, FedoraSolved.org. I'm going to keep, uh, keep looking at Fedora over the next little while. I think it's, it's pretty sleek. Okay. And it's it's interesting for me to step outside of Debian because I've been using it. You know, I've been almost in this box for so long. Yeah. So step I wanna, out of the box. Yeah, I want to I want to try it out and, and see uh, see how it works. 